If you're having a really hard time, uh, I would suggest maybe just doing a few problems where you actually predict the spectrum. Um, this is something you should be able to do anyway. It's just uh, have an NMR spectrum and just start sketching it out because it'll show you how each piece is involved. So for example, I see um, methyl hydrogens here. I see uh, another kind of hydrogen here. I see another kind of hydrogen here. And these are equivalent to each other. So I know that I'm going to have well, one, two, three kinds of hydrogens, three peak clusters. Where are they going to fall here? Now I have to think about chemical shift. These hydrogens are going to be alpha to a carbonyl. So going back to that chart from before, I think I recommended to you to know that these are three, two to three ppm. This hydrogen is next to a car, is on a carbon next to an oxygen. Now this is going to make it more downfield, but the value that I told you was think of that as between three to four. So I'm purely going based off the chart that I showed you. And then the other ones are farther away from that oxygen, so they're going to be more like 0 to 2 or 1 to 2. It doesn't matter what you put. These are just guidelines. The actual values just depend on other factors and the molecule as a whole, so it's hard to know exactly where they're going to be. Okay, so we've already talked about different, how many different signals. We said three different signals because we have three different kinds of hydrogen. They're um, non-equivalent to each other. We have chemical shift, where do they appear on the axis or in the spectrum? And then the, the next thing we learned was about the um, integration. So I should see a 3H integration if it's provided. It's not always provided. I should see a 6H integration because of the two methyl groups. And I should see a 1H integration from the meth methyl group. Okay, so there we go. 6H, 3H, and a 1H. Already the 6 and 3 tell me they're multiples of 3. They're methyl groups usually. Okay, so the last thing is then the splitting. So for splitting, these are too far away from the other hydrogens. They're going to be a singlet. So I have a 3H singlet. I have uh, these methyl groups are split by one neighbor, 1 plus 1, N plus 1 rule. This is a doublet. So a doublet, 6H doublet. And then I've got uh, this 1H split by its six neighbors. 6 plus 1 is 7. I'm just going to call that a multiplet. So now I have all the information I need going through those four features. Number of signals based on equivalency, um, chemical shift, integration, and splitting or multiplicity. Okay, so I'm just spacing this out, 0 to 4, because that's all I need. I've got from 1 to 2-ish, I've got these methyl groups, so I'm going to do um, a doublet somewhere in here between 1 and 2. So this is my doublet with the 6H integration. Uh, then I've got um, 2 to 3. I've got these alpha hydrogens of the carbonyl group. So I'm going to see a singlet between 2 and 3, and that's going to have a 3H integration. And then lastly, I'm going to have this 1H group, uh, and that's between 3 and 4 because it's the one next to the oxygen. So this one's going to be a multiplet, and specifically it's going to have 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Just sort of, you know, or you can just do, you know, it doesn't really matter. And you're going to just say this is a 1H integration. And clearly it's, it's a mess, so M for mess or M for multiplet, all right? So that's, that helps you because it forces you to put all the information together. So do a few like that just to get used to thinking about all those things. Um, and for me, I remember uh, learning this in, in college, my second year of college. Um, my roommate and I had the same organic chemistry class. And we were like, wow, we don't understand this at all. Like, it was so confusing, all these things. And so, um, you know, we just needed to wrap our minds around it. So we went back to our room, and we got a whiteboard, and we just passed it back and forth and went through every single thing. We went through, okay, let's start with the peak signals again. What's that all about? Practice that. Let's practice chemical shift. Let's practice integration. Let's practice splitting. Put it all together and just one spectrum after another, we just practice back and forth. I mean, even just a half hour, which isn't really a lot of time, um, 
practice that and then do it again the next day and do it again the next day so you don't forget everything you learn. And that will be really helpful for you, I promise. Um, even without a whiteboard, just a white sheet of paper, okay? And just um, work through, you know, really get motivated to figure it out because um, it doesn't really take a lot of time or effort. It, it will start to fit together like a puzzle, but you have to work at it. So as a review sheet or um, an outline, I would definitely go through those four features. Um, and um, I'm not going to test you so much on stuff about the magnetic field so much. Um, it's, just, it's just background information on how NMRs are collected. Um, more important to me is how you interpret them and that you know um, the structure is this instead of this because of the evidence from the NMR. So interpretation is really um, the key of what you need to know with NMR. So do as much practice as you can. Um, make an outline or some notes for yourself on those key four key features of an NMR, and then just practice uh, and see how this fits in with IR. So I'm going to put several files on Canvas for you to practice. A lot of the files are actually where you have a spectrum and you have to figure out what molecule it is. So that will that's probably the hardest thing, I think, is why I'm telling you to start with this uh, so that you can work toward this. Um, but eventually you should be at a point where you look at the peaks and you tell, tell me what's a possible structure that fits all of this information. Best way to get there is to practice that. So that's why I have lots of worksheets for you posted. Get to it. Do as many as you can.